In order to tackle the question, what is popular culture? I decided to utilize John Story's controversial six definitions of what he believes to be popular culture and applied that to the billion dollar video game industry and specifically looked at a game called Grand Theft Auto V, a game released in 2013 that went on to become the biggest entertainment launch in history. Right there, you can apply GTA V to Story's first definition of popular culture, quantitative, and thus argue that popular culture is indeed based on quantity. GTA V has sold more than 45 million copies and in just three days took $1 billion in sales. So if something has sold billions of copies, then surely it has reached a mass audience and thus can be deemed popular because of the sheer number of people it's reached. With those sales has come criticism, however. Australia has tried to ban GTA V from their store shelves and the franchise has been known to be criticized for its violent content, which ties into Story's second definition of popular culture being inferior work. But, but with criticism comes discussion, with discussion comes coverage, and with coverage comes popularity. A perfect example of this is Sony's The Interview. So popular culture can be argued as inferior, yet a mass attention. Similarly, if a text is controversial, then it will indeed become popular through the discussion it generates. On the flip side of this, if you look at the immensely positive reception of GTA V by critics, you can see that popular culture can be acclaimed and not inferior work. On the other hand, a film like Transformers Age of Extinction can receive low scores from critics, yet it make millions of dollars at the box office. Popular culture can therefore be twofold in that respect. Combining both mass culture and hegemony from Story's definitions, GTA V certainly fits into that bracket as well. The sales figures previously mentioned indicate a mass reach and economic dominance, but also there was a lot of media coverage leading up to the release. With the websites breaking down trailers with millions of views, which again ties into the quantity elements, to newspapers running articles of GTA V billboards occupying buildings, its launch in 2013 was very much a mass cultural event. Everyone was talking about it and awaiting its launch. And so popular culture is indeed something covered across the media. GTA 5 is also hegemonic in the sense of its availability across different platforms. It's initially released in 2013 on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One a year later, with PC the following year. So therefore, popular culture is indeed hegemonic in appealing to the masses across different platforms and means, this idea of cross-media convergence. And finally, GTA 5 is a very much postmodern story's sixth definition. It is a self-aware satirical mockery of contemporary popular culture and Western society, with references to the likes of Apple, the repair part, and the three protagonists embodying stereotypical American archetypes. Prior games are also influenced from the likes of gangster movies. And therefore, popular culture is indeed postmodern, which I fundamentally believe. In some capacity, whatever product has become popular culture has been influenced by some other. This is why we're in a time of superhero movies and franchise continuations because it is very risky from a business standpoint to launch something original and new. And so they borrow from existing material, but spin it slightly. Contemporary 2D platforming games are reskinned Mario titles, for example, and the Saints Row franchise simply wouldn't exist if not for GTA. Popular culture is ultimately commercialized products consumed by the masses because of familiarity, or established recognition, in my humble opinion.